Hello and uh, welcome to the final part uh, in this mini series uh, about uh, campaign uh, management. Um, now one of the questions I get asked uh, quite a lot is how do you set up your campaign so that it's exactly the same uh, every time. So in other words you've set up a campaign, you've got all the settings the way you like it, you've got your extensions the way you want it etc etc. So how do you um, du duplicate that in another campaign without um, having to set it up again in the uh, second campaign. Well, there's a couple of methods that you can use and I've got a campaign here which is uh, completely blank just to demonstrate. So there's no uh, open modules, uh, all the settings are at the uh, default. There is nothing in this campaign at all. It's completely blank, it's just been set up uh, and there's nothing in it. So we're going to uh, close out of this uh, campaign and we're going to create a new one. Uh, we'll call it 5e uh, video. Uh, we're going to select the uh, rule set that we want uh, and we're going to come down and we're going to select the uh, official theme because I like it uh, and then we're going to select the replace GM token extension as well just for fun. Uh, there's nothing else we need to do here apart from, uh, well, we don't need to correct the spelling, I suppose, but um, it'll offend me. Um, and then we can uh, start up this campaign. Uh, okay, uh, now that it's loaded, uh, we can get rid of this. Um, you can see we've got our theme and you can see down here that we uh, also had the replace GM token uh, loaded. Uh, we can now go into our library and uh, let's uh, activate some modules. Uh, so we want the player's handbook, try spelling it correctly. Uh, let's get the player's handbook loaded. Uh, and uh, what else do we want to load? Uh, let's, uh, let's search for D&D. &D. Um, let's just uh, let's get the D and D players descent into Avernus players book just for fun. So we've got a couple of modules uh, loaded here. Um, we are then going to go into our uh, options, um, and we're going to set the GM voice to uh, off. Uh, sorry, to on and the uh, show all whispers to GM. We're going to set that to on as well. So we've set these two. We've changed them from off uh, the default to uh, on. Um, we can then uh, go into, um, let's see if we can go into this and uh, let's say that we wanted to always have tables so we're going to drag this down and put it into the uh, quick bar down here. Um, maybe we'll get the reference manual drag that down as well. So we've got a couple of things in our uh, quick uh, start guide so that we can, or our uh, hotbar, so that we can uh, quickly uh, get to these uh, should we uh, desire. Uh, so that's it really. We've uh, set up our campaign the way we want it. We've got all our options the way we want it. We've got the modules open that, uh, that we want. We've got uh, our hotbar all set up. Um, so uh, how do we then replicate this in another uh, campaign without having to go through all that again? Well, uh, there are two uh, methods, as I say, uh, and the easiest method is if we uh, go to uh, our campaigns folder, and this is the campaign that we have uh, just created, uh, Play 5e Videos. If we go back a stage, we can see that uh, we've got the folder here, so all we really need to do is to copy that and then uh, paste it back in and we will get uh, or we should get uh, a play 5e video uh, copy um, and that is an exact duplicate uh, of the campaign that we uh, just uh, uh, created so if we go to a load campaign we'll need to come out of fantasy grounds for it to uh, uh, sort of uh, get back there and there's our play 5e copy if we start that up now uh, so this is the copy campaign and you can see this is an exact duplicate we've loaded the same extensions uh, the two modules that we had open are opened 
and and options the two uh, settings that we changed uh, are uh, set to on and down here we've got our uh, tables and our reference manual on the uh, quick bar uh, so that's the sort of quick and dirty method of uh, dealing with it but supposing you've got a situation where you've got a fairly long running campaign and you've got a bunch of stuff, you don't want to copy all of that campaign because you'll have everything in it, players, uh, combat tracker, any amendments you've made, there'll be a, a bunch of stuff that you don't really want. So copying the entire campaign is really not the answer. Uh, but there, there is another method. Uh, so let's uh, quit out of this campaign uh, for the moment. And uh, let's have a look at the files inside the campaign folder. So this is um, the uh, data folder for Fantasy Grounds campaigns and our uh, campaign name, a Play 5e video. This isn't the copy, this is the original uh, that we made before we did the copying. Uh, and these are the files that you will find in any a campaign which has just basically been opened up and closed down again. Um, if you have a longer running campaign there'll be more files than this but this is what the uh, file structure looks like in a new campaign has just been started and closed. Um, now there's a couple of uh, uh, files there's a, f a folder here called user settings and if we open that we see that we've got the hotkeys host xml uh, players will have um, i think it's client uh, or hotkeys client uh, xml um, but at any rate the um, this is where your uh, uh, hotkeys uh, positions uh, are saved and what you have in the hotkeys uh, underneath uh, that you've got the db xml which is the database of your uh, uh, campaign and so that's everything that's in your campaign, players, etc. Um, the uh, player characters, the state of the combat tracker, uh, the number of hit points each NPC has, everything on the campaign is saved there. And then we've got an extension state XML file, a module state XML file, and a window state XML file. And basically they all do the same. The extension state remembers what the state of the extensions were. That is what extensions you had loaded. Module state remembers what uh, modules you had loaded. And the window state remembers the last position uh, that any window was open. So when you go back into the campaign and open that same window, it'll be in the same place on your screen. So all of these uh, 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 files are saved when you close out a campaign. So we can use these files uh, to really to replicate uh, copying uh, our folder. Uh, if we've got a long running campaign, we don't want to copy the whole thing. So, but we can still copy these individual uh, files. So uh, if we go to the uh, user settings, we want to copy that. We're holding down control here. Uh, we want to also uh, copy the extension state file and we want to copy the module state file. So we're going to copy these three files and then we're going to go into our blank campaign that we showed you right at the beginning of the video and then we're going to paste these files in. You'll get a, a message to say, are you sure you want to do this because these files already exist? and we'll go the, there and we'll just replace those files. Now, one of the problems you will have in a long running campaign as far as your settings are concerned is that uh, they are embedded into the uh, DB uh, XML file. And as I say, the DB will contain everything. So you probably won't be able to copy over your uh, settings. Uh, easily from a long running campaign. So what you probably will have to do in that case is to is to create a new campaign and set everything up on that and then copy that. Um, but you can, if you wanted to, do the extension, the module and the user setting campaign. So if we just test that out now and go to our uh, blank campaign here, you can already see that the two extensions uh, that we have got is telling us that we they, they have been ticked, they have been loaded. Uh, so we start that up. 
uh, and we can see which was uh, what was previously a blank campaign with no theme uh, now has the theme the extension has been loaded we've got uh, our uh, hotbar is back and the modules that we had open uh, are in the modules folder so the only thing that we couldn't do in this circumstance was to change our or to copy over our options you see these two have been defaulted to uh, back to off now if you're an advanced user you could uh, find the um, xml in the uh, the database that you want to copy from uh, that controls all the uh, uh, options uh, and paste that into um, the database of your new campaign but uh, that's only if you know what you're doing i'm not even going to go there but if you know what you're doing then you probably don't even need this video anyway uh, so that's it for some of the um uh, sort of, kind of starting up a campaign in the same sort of state every time um, now there's one other thing that i just wanted to uh, cover here and if we look at this uh, file structure for the uh, the play 5e blank you'll find or you'll see that there is another uh, file here called db session and it's got uh, a number on it and if you're clever you'll find that that's the date uh, backwards uh, 27th uh, august 2022 um, and that tells fantasy grounds what what happens is when you close out fantasy grounds or every five minutes let's say the db gets saved and when you close out fantasy grounds it gets saved again when you start up the same campaign uh, usually on a different day um, then what it does is it takes a copy of the db xml and creates this file here a db session so if we if we were to open this up tomorrow then we'd have another session file which would be dated uh, 28th of august uh, 2022 um, and so you could have a number of these session files now these are useful files because if something happens to your database if you get uh, an error if somehow this database gets corrupted then you can uh, go back and uh, recover your database from a previous session file um, so I'm just going to come out of this campaign since we're uh, in it um, so if we look at this uh, DB session file here if we wanted to change that or if we wanted to make this the, se the new session file then first of all we would copy all of this uh, somewhere safe uh, which I'm not going to do for uh, ease of uh, time um, we're going to rename this file here to uh, db old and then we're going to uh, rename this one to uh, db and now you've got to make sure that you're seeing the .xml here if you're not seeing the .xml at all then you need to go up to view and make sure that you've got file name extensions ticked uh, up here um, and then you just uh, type in change the name and it'll keep the file so if we go back into uh, fantasy grounds again and just load up that uh, play 5e blank then you probably won't see any difference but uh, the thing is it will load and it'll be the same uh, uh, database it'll have the, the same information in it uh, as it uh, did previously uh, okay so we've loaded in uh, you can't really see any difference but obviously it is loaded in so just by uh, changing the uh, file name of the session to db uh, then you have uh, recovered your uh, campaign uh, so that's it for this video and for this uh, short series so thanks for watching again and uh, cheers for now